So we've set up now the twin paradox. You can see I've got some things covered up here because I don't want to uh, get too far ahead of ourselves and distract ourselves from some of the things we'll be doing here. But this is a twin paradox part two. And remember how we set it up. And the, the paradoxical part here is that both Bob and Alice, is here Bob, Alice takes her trip to the star three light years from Bob and then back again. Both of them see the other's clocks running slow, time dilation as we've done a number of times before. But when they get back, Alice is younger than Bob. And so Bob can understand. They say, oh, I, I can, as, as much as possible, can understand the time dilation effect. Yes, um, that's going on. And therefore, Alice is traveling with respect to Bob. And so he sees her clock running slow and also running slow on, on the way back. Uh, we talked about, remember, the acceleration issue here. And in fact, we can analyze the twin paradox without having to do anything with acceleration, the general theory of relativity, and so on and so forth. We can understand it just from the concepts of the special theory of, of relativity. So Bob sees Alice go out and back again and understands that with time dilation, she'll, her clocks are running slower. Uh, she should be younger. But Alice sees the same thing for Bob. So the question is, why is Alice younger? That's the paradox. How can she understand that she's younger when it seems like maybe Bob should be younger? And so that's what we want to do in, in this part two of the twin paradox. And we're going to uh, use our space-time diagram to see if we can understand it graphically. You can see I've added some green dashed lines here. We'll get to those in, in due time. But essentially what we want to do here is break this basic diagram up into two parts. We're going to look at the outbound trip, and then we're going to look at the inbound trip. So let's take a look at the, uh, the outbound trip here. This doesn't take off my too much of the, the diagram here. OK, so what, we're, what we've done, like we've done a number of times before, is we have put both of their uh, space-time diagrams on the same plot, both Alice and Bob. So Bob is in black. Alice is in red. So we can see Bob's got the 90-degree angles. Alice, for a velocity of 0.6c, we've drawn the appropriate angle uh, of each of these. This is the x sub a axis. This is the t sub a axis. In fact, remember, this really is the, the world line for Alice. She's moving along the t sub a axis. And we can see that as she moves along, when she gets to four, um, four years on her clocks, she's at the star, three light years away. And on Bob's clocks, that reads five light years. In the next part, we're going to do this quantitatively. We're actually going to put, put the numbers in. So they do check out here. But in terms of three light years, velocity is 0.6 C. Clearly, Bob sees Alice go um, three light years. And it takes five years to go three light years at 0.6 C. And Alice, from the time dilation effect, the, the gamma equals 1.25 factor takes her four years as Bob is observing her, her clocks. Now, the key thing here to remember, and we've done this before, is the lines of simultaneity. So I, the dashed red lines are the lines of simultaneity for Alice. The black lines, the horizontal lines, are the lines of simultaneity for, for Bob. And uh, as we've noticed before, this can show us that both of them see the other's clocks running more slowly than, than theirs. So for example, if we just pick out when Alice's clock is at 4 here on her time axis, the line of simultaneity for if she had her lattice of clocks, remember really the lines of simultaneity represent the lattice of clocks in each frame of reference. And so she has her lattice of clocks here all synchronized. And so when this clock here is at 4, all these clocks for her read 4. It's a line, that's the definition of a line of simultaneity, of course, and line of same time. And therefore, she sees, if she took, takes a photograph right here with Bob's clock in the photograph as well, she sees his clock is actually 3.1, 3.2, something right, right in there. So her clock is at 4 at that instant. In terms of the line of simultaneity, Bob's clock is at 3.2, say. So she sees Bob's clocks running slower than hers. In other words, hers, as she travels along here, her clocks have run through four years of time and she's observed Bob's clocks run through only about 3.2 years of time. 
Meanwhile, Bob observes the same thing. His clocks are going one, you know, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. The lines are simultaneous. So the black dashed lines represent his lattice of clocks at any given instant in time. And so we can see when he gets up to five years, Alice's clock on that line of simultaneity is only at four years. And of course, it's because they're using different lines of, of simultaneity. Simultaneity is relative, as we've said many times before. So we can understand that from our space-time diagram here. Uh, so just to reiterate, this, this actually the outbound trip is, is similar to things we've done before, but just to make sure we understand here. So here comes Alice. She's traveling along. Uh, and in Bob's frame of reference, of course, she's traveling on the x-axis here. And she gets to three light years out. That's where the star is. And then at that point, she's going to start her return trip. So really, this line right here, which is her world line traveling through Bob's frame of reference, is the same as this line right here, traveling out to, to the star. And we've just put the lines of simultaneity in and, and um, also the scale markings for, for Alice's uh, clock and actually her X, A axis as well. Okay, so that's the outbound trip. We see that when Alice reaches the star, Bob's clock reads five, Alice's clock reads four. And so then the next thing we have to understand is uh, the, the inbound trip back again. So let's take a look at that now. And actually, before we do that, I want to mention one, one thing here. One reminder, we've mentioned this before, but haven't used it as much as we've done this diagram, this combined diagram, and that is this is a diagram for uh, Alice, in this case, moving to the right with positive velocity. If we have a situation where the person or object or whatever is moving to the left, remember it's a different combined diagram. We still have, I'll just do it right here to, to sketch it and then we'll see an exact uh, diagram here. So we still have something like this where we have, in this case, T sub B. So this is Bob being stationary in his frame of reference. Then if we've got the, fr the other frame of reference moving to the left, we get something like this for the other axes. Let's even see if I have any red left here. Um, something like this and like that, roughly speaking. Okay, where this is TA and this is not XA, not T there. Okay. Um, we haven't done as much with that just because normally we have things moving to the right. It's just easier to work with that one direction than can reverse things if we have to to go to the left. But if we're going to do a combined diagram with, with something moving to the left, as Bob is observing it here from his frame of reference, then uh, just think about this. Again, the, the T sub A axis here is a line of simultaneity. Uh, not th I'm sorry. Um, not the line of simultaneity. is a world line for that object moving, clearly it's moving to the left on the x-axis. As time goes on, its x value is increasing negatively there. And then the lines of simultaneity, if we put those in, again are always parallel to the x-axis. And so just roughly speaking, the lines of simultaneity are going to look something like that. And Bob's are still going to be the horizontal lines. And this is going to be a key point actually because what happens is when Alice turns around at the star, her frame of reference is changing. Instead of going positive velocity, now she's going in the opposite direction. And when that changes, her lines of simultaneity change as well. And so that's what we want to analyze now using a diagram that's going to look something like this. So let's take a look at that for the inbound trip. So now we're going to, to look at this part of the trip. Going back from the star, remember everything's really happening on the x-axis here. She goes out to the star, turns around, and comes back again. And this is the world line out, and then the world line back, and ends up at the, uh, the planet again, if that's where Bob is. Okay, so, we got this here. Here's what the inbound trip looks like. And uh, again, it's useful for you to reproduce this. If you have graph paper, great, but the, the key thing is just get a general sketch of what's going on here. So here's what we've done. We've taken Alice out to three light years away, so now we're starting at three light years. Okay, so this right here is this segment of her trip back. And note, just like we had up here a minute ago, we'll look at this one more time. Note the similarity here between 
This is what we have, this combined space-time diagram when something is moving to the left. Notice what we have here. Okay, so the XA axis going down like that, TA axis, T sub A axis tilted to the left, and the lines of simultaneity. This is really why we have the X sub A axis in this diagram, because we want those lines of simultaneity for her new frame of reference. One frame of reference going out, velocity going that way, now has turned around coming back this way, has a new frame of reference. She's changed her frame of reference. So let's see what we've got here. Again, we've put the, the markings, scale markings for her. And, and once again, if we wanted to, you could look and see that um, each of them thinks the other clock, the other's clocks are, are running slow. And uh, what happens, though, as she moves back towards Bob position at zero here, you can see moving that she ends up at that point when she gets back, her clocks have ticked off eight total. In other words, she started, remember, to get to here, she went to four, and then going back, it's just another four. So that's very symmetrical that way. Uh, the question, though, again, is where does uh, that extra time for Bob go? Because, again, Alice should be thinking, Alice sees Bob's, clock running, Bob's clocks running more slowly than her clocks, and therefore uh, she should think, shouldn't Bob be younger when I get back? Well, here's the key thing, and we've tried to bring it out with these these um, dots here, the dash, green dashed lines. Let's take a look at that. When she's at the planet, okay? from the outbound trip, she gets there. And at that instant, when she arrives, she may, presuming she hasn't slowed down quite yet, so she's still going with velocity v toward the planet, her line of simultaneity is, with that frame of reference, pointing back down here. Bob's clocks read 3.2, actually. It looks like 3.1. It's really 3.2 when we do it in the next uh, part of uh, the Twin Paradox video. So it points there, okay? As soon as she turns around and starts going the other direction, her frame of reference changes, her lines of simultaneity change, and note that, you know, here's where she is. She's at the planet right there. So really this point and this point are the same if we combine the diagrams. You know, it's really this point right here. You know, when she's at the, at the planet. And so in that instant of turning around, all of a sudden, she's in a new frame of reference with different lines of simultaneity. Her first frame of reference, lines of simultaneity go down like this. And so when she's there, this green dashed line represents her line of simultaneity. As soon as she turns around, and we're assuming not quite instantaneously, but fast enough such that we can ignore the acceleration and deceleration compared to the long time of uh, just going at constant velocity, as soon as she turns around, essentially what that acceleration deceleration does is it puts her into a new frame of reference. She decelerates and then accelerates again very quickly up to her velocity of 0.6c. So now she's heading, heading back here, but she's in a new frame of reference. The lines of simultaneity now point this way. So look what happens in that few instances of turning around. Right before she turns around, if she compared took photographs of all her clocks and any, uh, Bob's clock back here at the home planet, his clock would read 3.2. As soon as she goes through the process of turning around and then looks at her lattice of clocks and sees where Bob's clocks are back at the home planet, look where it is. It's up at 6.8, actually. Okay. So in that turning around pr procedure, her, as far as she's concerned, if she's observing Bob's clocks during that time, his clocks speed up from 3.2 here to 6.8. And that's where the lost time, as it were, comes in. It's during that turning around process. Because then, and as we'll see quantitatively in the next uh, video clip, that uh, then it just ticks off normally. She sees his clocks running at uh, 3.2. So essentially on the... Outbound trip, she sees his clocks reading a total of 3.2 uh, years, as we'll, we'll see in the next clip. And then on the inbound trip, she sees from 6.8 to 10 is another 3.2 years, while her clocks read four years on each leg. And then again, what happens is, though, so if you think about 3.2 years, she observes Bob's clocks running slow. Another 3.2, that's 6.4. So when she gets back, she says, hey, Bob, I thought you know, you'd be 6.4. You'd have aged 6.4 years while well, I aged 8 years. 
But again, that turning around, the switching of, of frames of reference is uh, accounted for, or really the clocks then in, in Bob's frame of reference, or really Bob's clocks from Alice's perspective, from Alice's frame of reference, jump from 3.2 to 6.8. So when she does get back, Bob is 10, has aged 10 years, and she has aged 8 years. So what we want to do in the next video clip then is uh, do this quantitatively with some of the uh, procedures and machinery we've developed, time dilation and, and so on and so forth, the Lorentz transformation, and see if we can get the numbers to, to work out. Again, conclude that uh, there's this jump. When analysis changes, changes frame of reference, there's this big jump in the timekeeping as she is observing Bob's clocks, and that's the key to understanding the twin paradox. <laughs>